All right, so I decided to try and give a game called Squally a shot here. So Squally is a game that is intentionally vulnerable, kind of like Fun Adventure 3 and a couple of others that are out there. Here's their store page on Steam, which is one of the biggest differences between what I just went through a little while ago with Fun Adventure 3. Uh, and this game is that this one's actually available on Steam. I got it. Uh, that's a plus and a minus. I mean, it's kind of cool that it's on Steam. Uh, there's a community that seems to be kind of active around it. Uh, as you can see, it was released quite a while ago. Um, uh, so that's that's cool. Uh, the downside, of course, is you know, it's on Steam. It costs 25 bucks. Um, hopefully it's worth it. Probably will be. I just wanted to uh, show the store page so that you can find it and also so that I could... Uh, find out who made it because uh, i actually did not check so this is published by squalor inc which i think so yes it seems like this is just their game uh zachary kane looks like so uh let's head back and start the game this is a 2d side scroller where you play what appears to be a brain uh, and again this is intentionally vulnerable um, Squally is a 2D puzzle RPG programming game that teaches you how to hack, control the world by rewriting it. Uh, okay. Sounds like it could be fun. I haven't played any of it, and I haven't watched any gameplay of it. I don't really know much about it. The only thing I've done uh, is I started it up, and I went into the hacking tutorials and just started uh, messing around with them, uh, just to get a feel for it and see, you know, what the game was like uh i got to about this point uh and then on this last stage i uh i finally took a look at the menu uh and noticed that there was like all kinds of stuff that i uh, there's mechanics in the game i don't understand how it works yet apparently it's like a trading card game um but also there's like quick time events or something and you can get a party so i got to about this point and then i realized you know might as well just play the game and maybe come back and finish these later, you know, if I, if I don't want to. Uh, so let's uh, let's give it a try and see if we can get a feel for this game here. Oh, you know what? Let me go back. I started the story mode and... Uh, and uh, that that's pretty much the first stage right there like so that's your first challenge so i'll start it over from the beginning so you can see this initial gameplay here all right so squally crash lands on this alien planet on the floating brain uh space is punch w uh, oh, sorry uh a and d is left and right S is down, W doesn't do it. Oh, okay. never mind. W is apparently jump. Up here I can see one life out of 16. I don't know what these eyes are. This one is, that might be the number of lives. IOU, if you can't read that in the corner of this piece of paper, says IOU. I have zero of those. I've got eight of whatever these amulets or something are. No DC in the corner. Let's check this is our uh, pause menu here's the inventory i don't have anything here's the party i have myself now i also see that there's some stars here stuck what does this do if you're stuck this will attempt to reload the map okay we don't need that now but it's good to know that's there here's the cards i was talking about oh and i start with some cards um I can see that each of the cards has a different binary des and hex value. Or not they're not different. They're the same value in different things. Some of them seem to have special abilities. This card returns to your hand at the end of the round. Okay, so if I can help then. This is an attack card. Attack cards can be binary decimal or hexadecimal cards and can only be played in the corresponding row. Okay. Okay, I they're so they're equal. I don't is this just to show that one zero one zero ten and A are the same value? Because 
Okay, I'm okay. I'm, I must be on this. Oh, let's hide it. This card is played. So I don't even know what to do. I don't know if those are for what those. Looks like there's some animals in the game. <clears throat> Under options, uh, we've got the sound volume, which I have the music turned down. Um, resolution, although if you maximize the window, it seems to uh, just settle on the uh, resolution for the window size anyway. Lots of language support, which is great if you're not a native English speaker. And under memes, we have, oh, there are memes for the developers. Oh, it says developers. There's the scroll bar, even though there is nothing on it. So, see Kaden, that's TM, and Techno Man 117. Techno Man 117 is invisible, which is very nice for them. And so, nothing. All right, no further ado, let's get back to, let's here, press space to attack, space, attack, attack. It was pointless, but I did it anyway. All right, you're alive. You must be the one that responded to our distress beacon. Let's get you patched up and head into town. Scrappy has joined your party. Not healed up. Objective, head towards town. And get the right hand. Um, apparently no falling damage since I'm floating. I'm gonna guess there's no falling damage. Indian forest. Maybe they don't want me to reach them, apparently. Oh, that heals me up to full cruise now. I'm not sure why I don't want to, just let me know if I can. Trap ahead, you'll need to use your powers to get through. Press tab to toggle hacker mode. Okay, this is exactly as far as I went before. I didn't want to solve the first challenge without eh, walking through. So, let's see what we, we've got. Uh, so, toggling into hacker mode, I enter the matrix. I see there's these gears here. Do with them. Launch timer. Okay. All right, so launch timer looks like yeah, we function update launch timer. Uh, so it looks like we have the assembly code for this function. Looks complicated. I delete all the code. Type some knob in. Cex appointment launch countdown timer. See that. XMM0, a copy of the current launch countdown timer. So, sub and move. Lapse time since last update. Okay. Over here are your scripts. So, in read only, we have the original code. So, we could click that and it jumps back over there. My new script, I guess this is where I would enter it. So, we have the original so that we can refer back to it. We have a script that we can add in our own assembly and update that. Compile successful address. Um, I don't have, I, I haven't started cheat engineering because I wasn't sure what I was going to need for this, but we can maybe verify this and see if we can actually update this in the cheat engine rather than using this UI. Maybe at byte count 7 to 17, unfilled bytes will be filled with enough instructions which do nothing. So, this will be bytes for. Looks like there's a Discord for this game. It's lexicon. Some of the languages used to modify programming and for the machine language, which we use probably. Yeah, some of the others. Let's just say that. Okay. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Let's see what it, if it has the same text or not. No, oh, it has a, a even better. Description well better relatively better. Um you know what I don't see though. Okay. What I don't see are here they are. 
So if it's a simple operation that subtracts one number from another, we see that there is a sub in the assembly instructions for this countdown timer, which is very simple. Uh, so here we have it registers, right? And it's going to, it looks like it walks us through the changes in the stack while this goes on. That's, that's very nice. So sub EBX2. So there's our value of EBX. It looks like this. We can see, oh, that's nice. That's, that makes the change right there loud for us. It even highlights it. That's really nice. So sub ECX EBX. So ECX is 5,000. EBX is 2. And if we execute that, yes, indeed. And we can continue to do that. Let's also do this too. Showing that we, we don't just have to have a raw value here. We can uh, use a sub for a value that's in another register. That's nice. Uh, EAX10. So EAX uh, is let's see, at the top. And then, yeah, that's zero, just fine. I don't know why I'm checking their math. It's, it seems to be good. I don't use the, the braces indicate that EAX is a pointer to a variable. This means that EAX is tracking the location of a variable. Okay. Well, that is uh, really nice. Honestly, if this wasn't 25 bucks, um, I did just get through the game hacking course. Just saying. And uh, I used Point Adventure 3 for that because it was free and relatively easy to set up and, and, and the challenges were not terribly difficult. Um, but the problem with that is that the supporting materials, um, there really aren't any in the game. You have to kind of look for write-ups. Um, and if this wasn't 25 bucks, this might be even better because, uh, I mean, just this this alone, I think, for students would be a really good uh, reference for them. I might... Yeah, I couldn't mandate students paying for the game. That doesn't seem right. Yeah, it's too bad. I can recommend it, I guess. Maybe someday there will be a you know, Steam sale or something, and I'll buy, like, as many copies as I can to, to give out to students. So anyway, I guess let's, let's do this challenge. Script. Script. Script down here. All right, cool. All right. Look at that. It updates on the map. All right, there we go. Snap the function. Does it revert back to the original code at the time? Yes, it does. Nice. Oh, here's an IOU. Whoa. That was a good one. Oh, let me um, turn on the sound so that you can enjoy the nice loud sound effects too. IOUs can be exchanged for potions, weapons, and other items of shops. Okay. So, didn't need that. Thank you. A cursed training for me. This will be good. Fighting practice. Okay. Now, this must be the card game I've been playing. Yeah. Why not? Attack. Defend. I don't have any items. I can't defend. Okay. Punch. Yeah, that guy. Interrupted. Holy moly. Thousand uh, health. One hundred and ninety nine. So that must be like mana. He just used one mana to heal himself. Okay. Let's see the, the matrix symbols around him. Oh, he heals for quite a bit. Is your ability to gain an advantage in combat plus 10 and 10 to hacker me? Okay. Add health function. Add adds two numbers together with this code, heals the enemy, change it to sub to decrease the Or we could wear him down and have him heal zero, but that's slower, so. 
I like how it updates. I like how it does this. So if I compile error, that's really made a mistake. That's nice. That's a nice feature. Um, so, or we could also fit the two negative. Actually, let's, let's not do what the robot asks us to do. Let's put the two negative. Take that dummy. 16 experience points over. I don't know what's a clover do. Can't hear me. Now you can hear me. I wonder if there are are there levels or like is there gonna be a good stopping point? Let's like get some smoke blades here. Set target angle. Need to get this blade out of your way, try replacing the units. I just should make the blade rotate to 90 degrees. Uh, so here we have this shows EBX. So EAX temporary variable with the computed swing angle. So it looks like EBX is incrementing by 90 each time. Right. So rather than adding the cumulative value of EAX or moving rather than the cumulative value of EAX. Simply replacing it to 90 uh, will always cause it to stay 90 degrees. That's what it looks like. Our goal is here. And there we go. Oh, this one's different though. Well, these are different things. Set target angle. I want the floor this time. You want the floor to face down. So if we look over here on the right, we can see um, what the orientation is. So. Uh, zero degrees is directly to the right, and then 90 degrees from zero, 180 degrees from zero, and 270 degrees from zero. Oops, I was a little bit too close, and I got hit by one of them anyway. That, okay. that teaches me to not get too close to them, I guess. this time. Okay. It took only one swing to take me out though. I'm not sure what the point of having health is if it is just going to punish me, but um, maybe later on I'll gain more health and I'll a real enemy ahead. Let's take it out. I cannot get them proactively it seems. I have to wait until they're actually initiated. First strike! Okay, so I have to wait for their ability to reveal itself before I can actually. So I can't, I can't just enter hacker mode, target them, and like for example, set their health variable. I have to wait uh, for it to tell me what its ability that I can manipulate is, which is a little. Yeah, maybe it's just because it's the first level. Maybe later on it'll be able to do a little bit more. I still can't. Goodness. I can defend now. I guess let's try that. Out. What does that do? Does it reduce the amount of damage I take or prevent any damage? Let's try again. So let's see what happens. It reduces the amount of damage that I take. I, just, I wonder if I should just fight with cheat engine. But, you know, CS don't do it. In fact, I can't do anything with that. Now use your abilities. Well, why could they use all four? Increment. Increment needs increment by one. This code heals the enemy. Change it to decrement to decrease the amount of health instead. Okay. EDI, the amount of healing per tick. Well, you know, I can also just do this one. Okay, let's do what it says. 
let's attack. It reduces health a little bit more because it looks like it's going to tick down by one. And boom. He did. I did take damage that time. This looks like it might be town. That is my see it in V takes me to some of this. This what are you? Some kind of wolf guy. Take to say town gate for the mark. Uh town gate. I'm gonna interest the town gains are worse. So I'm going to see the queen first, so let's do it. And who are you? Who are you? Looks like we got some wizards here. There might be a, like a character Easter egg here, but I don't. don't so okay, that's true. That looks like me. Exclamation point over your head. You must be You can answer a call for help. Do you remember anything before your ship crashed? Squally says nothing. Thought not. You possess strong powers, but you need more training. To begin, you must learn the game of Hexus. Okay, that must be the trading card thing. Must be a game within the game. Hexus is a card game invented by the ancients, and Hexus skill flows from a master of binary Hexus. Whoever masters Hexus will possess the skills required to live to the very nature of Hexus itself. I shall open a portal to the gauntlet, defeat the challengers, then return to me for a reward. Alternatively, if you believe you are already prepared, talk to me, and I shall test your skills. I don't think I'm ready, so let's find out what this game is about, because I don't know yet. Hey, I remember you guys from being in the background in the last screen feed. I have come to learn from you. The objective is simple. Whoever has the higher score at the end of the round remains the lead. Each player starts the game with two lives. The player with the lowest score at the end of a round will lose a life. In this game, both players have lost one life. Okay. Increase your score by playing cards into rows. Okay. Blue cards are binary cards. White cards are desk cards. Green cards are hex cards. Give it a shot. Play your cards into their corresponding rows. I have. I'm, I'm not understanding where the strategy in this game comes in because it seems like if you've got cards, then you just lay them down, right? And if your goal is to get the higher score, why wouldn't you just play your highest value cards? Or is that is that the point? Like you don't know what's a higher value card unless you understand desk and binary. Is that it? I don't know. Is that, is that the point of the game? Or do I just keep playing? There's no turns? I mean, you don't even need to be able to do the translation between hex desk and binary, apparently, because if you just click on the help button, it tells you. Okay, do I draw? I don't know. Do I, if I have to draw more cards or what? This doesn't seem like it's. I win the round, okay? One of those last two last. Okay, I, just, I I get, like, how to win. I don't understand the strategy, the point. Like, where where is the game part of this game? 
Does it just come down to who draws better cards? That doesn't seem very sporting at all. Good game. Alright, if you say so. Yes. Hey, you. You want to play some Hexus? I've come to learn from you. You already have a large lead over your opponent. You know, being good, I do. You want to save your cards for the next round. The best option is simply to defend yourself until the next round. What does defend do? It's not telling me what these things do, they're just telling me to do them. Opponents do. Cast. Well, that seems like it would be unwise because I was way ahead of you, but okay. Excuse me. <clears throat> Had to drink some water. <clears throat> Alright. So I saved my card until the next round. Do I, do, do I not draw more cards? Opponent pass. So she just... She just gave... She just, uh, apparently she didn't want to play. I guess that's perfect. Okay. I guess it was a psychological game. And I just had defeated you before we even drew our cards. <laughs> you look like you might be a tough customer. I've come to learn from you. Your opponent has a large lead over you. Your cards will not be enough to win this round. Your best option is to surrender this round and fight back next round. It doesn't seem like it would be unless I just can't draw more cards. And if I can't draw more cards, then doesn't that mean I just basically lose? Alright, I'll say so. Alright, well, we do have zero, so I kind of feel like... Now you have eight. Which are... Okay, well, I win. Well, I had zero. Let's name this card. Okay, I'm still. <laughs> I, am, I am not understanding the fundamental the fundamentals of the game part of this game. I understand the rules of the game in so much as what it's been presented to me. I don't understand the point of the game. Obviously, is I guess to sort of teach these things. But I don't understand the gameness of the game. Oh, here we have some op cards. Okay. Remove card copies the attack from your cards to any other cards to weaken your opponents. Okay, so if I copy the attack of one of your cards to any other Okay, so if I copy the carrots to the big guy... Okay. Alright, now, now it's... I'm starting to see the game part of the game, then if you can do op and, and like, cards have special features or something, that, that makes sense. Didn't seem like it was a brain buster, but we are still in the beginning stages here, so... Oh, we're back to this guy. <clears throat> so you're able to make it through the gauntlet? Good. You're ready for a real match. Okay, if you say so, I still feel like I don't really know what I'm doing. Now that you understand the basics, it's time for a real match that will simply win two rounds before your opponent does. Okay. Holy moly, that's all the cards that I was given before. <clears throat> Remaining card replacements, three. Oh, so I can pick cards to replace. Okay. Now, some of these have... Oh, okay. It actually shows the background. Especially for the card. Select one of your cards and add its value to another card. This result is stored. Type card. When this card is played, all copies of this card will be played from your hand to the deck. So that would be useful if I had more of them, but I don't. This card returns to your hand at the end of the round. Well, I think I'm not going to keep that despite its low value, because it seems like card economy is kind of an important part to the game. And I'm not. Okay. Alright, where was I? Uh, Alright, draw one card when this card is played. You know, despite the fact that it has zero value, uh, I think that might be worth hanging on to because of a special feature. So, um... I can, uh, it looks like I can pick three cards to replace. So I'm going to pick this one because I only have... Ooh, that was a good pick. Um, I'm not sure this is as good as it seems. So let's replace that one. Uh, that was probably a good trade. And I don't have any binary cards right now. So let's go with this. Let's see, see how we do. I go first. Okay. Let's throw that out there. I'll 
Let's do... That out there. Okay. Why did they get more cards? Well, even if they play all those, I'm still in the lead. Oh, wait. Oh, they did play them. That's how I can see them. Okay, I gotcha. Um, let's see. It's not really worth playing any of my things, I think. So if I defend, will they get, they'll, they'll, get, they'll get to go again, you know? Right, well, let's see what happens. So they do get to keep going back and forth until they also get, uh, oh, and I do draw cards at the end. Oh, and I get to keep the number of replacements that I have. Um, this I'll replace, and there we go. Okay, my turn now. Uh, well, let's do this out there. Two, five, okay, the tide. Look her out. Let's throw out the carrots. And then I'll throw out this. Hey, that actually drew from the deck. I wish I had known that. Okay, and then I will now play. Remove carrots on that guy. And I'll play this. Alright, now now it's starting to seem more like a game. Alright, let's play that guy. Let's add. Can I only play this against my own cards, or can I add this to, like, for example, can I add my carrot to one of his? Yes, I can. Oh, but that's that's going to be an add. We don't want to do that. Uh, we do want to add this. One pass, we are tied. Oh, if you tie, then you lose a life. Okay. Yeah, all right. Let's try that again. Uh, yep. Okay, I'm starting to get. I'm not, not that dumb. Just kind of dumb. Uh, I don't think I need two carrots. If I play this one, er, er, <laughs> excuse me. If I play this one early, we're probably good. All right. And let's right away move this to here. <laughs> drag this out a little while, then we'll be good. Let's see here. Yeah, let's play the big boy. Take the lead. Alright. Tied. Okay. Well, uh, I guess it doesn't really make much difference. They're the same deck. Your opponent has passed, playing the victory of this round. Thank you. I need 
this. Um, I thought I had two swaps, but I don't know if I can win this now. I don't really like my cards. Let's play Shroom. And King Spider Guy. Let's play that to introduce that and this and that. There we go. We did it. Well done. However, you still have much to learn. The mages brought you here to vanquish great evil, but you are not yet ready. You brought me to this planet to learn how to play a card game. It seems like. I don't know. Scrappy is programmed to guide you through the training. First, take the key I have given you and head to the prison. And there you will learn more about the enemies that you will face on your quest. Okay. You're still in still in the training mode then, huh? Okay. I take it then over here is the prison. This looks pretty prison-like. Unlock. I think there's this. I don't know what this is. What's this? And if you discover warp locations on your journey, activate them. Doing so allow you to quickly swap warp to a final place. Okay. I see. So I, I'm not ready for this yet. But, uh, it's good to know what this is, I guess. Back to the prison. Prison. Troll. Troll in the dungeon. What are you talking about? Oh. I gotta say, the effort that went into this game is, is obvious, and the character design is pretty awesome, you know. Um, gameplay is okay so far, I'm liking it, but character design is, is definitely keeping me drawn in. There's a troll. Alright, we gotta pay the troll toll. They are defending. Okay, then I guess I will attack. Now use your abilities, Fortitude. <clears throat> oh, we got some comments. <sighs> Alright, EDX, the damage being dealt. Okay, so apparently block. Uh, EDX is the damage dealt to the enemy. Uh -huh. The original code reduces the damage against the by 3, which I guess, yes, is the function of block. It reduces the damage. I'm surprised that it uh, reduces the damage by a fixed amount. In my case, the orc was hitting me for four, and when I defended, it hit me for two, so I assumed that blocking was just a straight 50% reduction in damage, but apparently not. Uh, instead of reducing the damage... Uh, uh, da, 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 da. Bound between zero and... Um, yes, we could change sub to add. Or we could sub a negative number. Let's add uh, 30. Ow! Ow! Apparently, um, was that supposed to be a hex value? Oh no, I healed you to that thing again. I don't even know what to do here, though. Oh, wait, this is already... Oh, it saved my script from last time. That's nice, it's nice not to do it again. Anyway, apparently uh, the value should have been in the X instead of this. But it's okay. We have persevered copper, quartz, honey, and three IOUs of 25 XP. That was neat. 
Okay, you look pretty smart, but you haven't got out of here and I didn't trouble. This wally says nothing. What got me into this meth? These idiots. This mess. These idiots think I'm one. What got me into this meth? <laughs> These idiots think I'm one of those monsters running around. We should help them. But we're going, we need all the help we can get. This gate only opens if the left number matches the right number for exactly consecutive times. We can crack it open. They do match. One and two. Two and four. Okay, so this one on the right is incrementing by two. This one on the left is incrementing by one. We can fix that. The instruction I mold multiplies, multiplies two integers. In register ECX is the number at the top of the door. This code means the left number equals. The top number times one would be times two. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Freedom! I ain't much of a fighter, but I'll gladly tag along with you if you'll play. I'll also help you out if you ever need to find something in someone's pockets for you. Goblins are masters of stealth. You know. You told me that you weren't in prison for a good reason, but now I find out that you're a thief. I kind of feel like maybe that's why you were in prison. I'm a floating brain, so I probably should have figured that out sooner. Oh, I can see that my number up here in the upper left-hand corner here underneath Squally is now a 2, so I'm guessing that means I leveled up, but I, I'll rescue Guano. Your name is Guano? 2. That's actually a pretty solid goblin name, I want to think about it. I'm going to steal that one. Uh, anyway, so I, I leveled up, but I didn't see, like, any, hey, you leveled up, and dun 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 dun, dun thing. So I don't know if, like, there's actual RPG elements to this. Some entities can be pickpocketed. Pocketed. If Wano is in your party, hold shift, and you can move to steal your items. Okay. If Wano is in your party, you have to be... Oh, holy. This is what I'm talking about with character design. They're just... Phenomenal. Oh, I love the style here. Okay, I'm gonna check the chest. Health potion, mana potion, gold, and gold. Alright, I still don't know what any of this is for. Is there a crafting? I mean, health and mana potions are fairly self explanatory, but is there like a crafting thing? Find a way to sneak into town. I suppose we will use Guano to pickpocket the key from the guard. Is that what I'm meant to do here? I feel like they sent me here to do a job, and they should probably just let me in to do it, rather than forcing me to jump through hoops here. But we are going to ignore these plot holes. I only just have fun. Hey there. It says here that you have a chest. Okay. Stone obelisk. Is there anybody that can steal? Oh, I can. Gold Guano. Stone Obelisk again. Copper and wood. Alright. Well. Cool. We're stealing things now. I have no moral objection to this. Yes, I have learned this already. Town Key. Wood and Dark Seed. You know, I'm here sent by the wizards. Okay, well, we should probably talk to the queen then and tell her to deal with these wizards. Oh, Wano, if he jumps, will fall. Alright, good to know. Unlock. So, town is unlocked. Is this a good stopping point? I don't know. I have not uh, seen any checkpoints or this. No, there's no save. I wonder if I quit, if it will just completely lose. Elbridge. We'll need to get off this island. Let's ask around to see if we can find it. Okay, I'm gonna guess that at that point is when. Or are these also checkpoints? Guessing when we get off the island is not. It's when. It's just peace just right there. Whoa! Apparently that does that. Uh, if I do this, will it kill me? Let's find out. Oh, no. It's, there's multiple levels to this town. 
And once you're up, you cannot go down. Smith shop, I don't so there's the gates. <sighs> okay. Many ways for us to go to the potion shop. Fall down here. That's how we get back down. There's the guy with the dark seed and honey, so we pick pocket with him. There's a portal here. And I can go the rest of this way. Two ways to go up and down. Go up. We got a centaur. Nobody needs sound by already. Okay, and we can't let's see if we choose the up path. Oh can we not even can we apparently we can't stick down there. I don't know I can't I can't choose it apparently. I don't know if there's anything down here. Hey guy, you want to play some Hexus? Um, the home can be found at the top of town in the center of Drive the Wind here. Okay. I want a round of Hexus. I am liking these, except this one. That is a good trade. So let's do that. I go first, okay. Show me the way. On the past, okay. <laughs> Yeah, let's, let's do that. Do Let's see. I'm going to try something here. First, I'm going to move my cube uh, and see if that value actually increments or if it remains zero. To add the value of this to my carrot and see if that increments with my thing as well. It does not. So well, on both counts, uh, you reset this to zero, or you, you do an add on, or move on this, and it set, resets it to zero, it continues to increment, and uh, this does not share that value, it just give the current stat value, so good to know. Let's do this. I don't see how it could possibly be, but okay. I'm going to play the... This and victory. Yay! What do I get? Oh, I won Pino. Let me go. Let me uh let me go to my cards here. See, this is everything in my deck, it seems. Got peanuts. Skip. This card cannot be destroyed. It actually sounds like a name. What? Essence of life. How do we attack a one of cards? Okay, that sounds good. Flip the first bit of odd cards in a row. Whoa! Yeah! Yeah, definitely uh, good on that one. I haven't seen the. Oh, wait, I've seen the demon mushroom. Yes, I have seen Gluttony, Jacob, yeah. The PS edition, yeah. <laughs> I've seen all of these come up in this place. I don't think I've seen Stabby. Oh yeah, I did see Stabby once. Shroomy, Skitters. Okay. Um, I got 
the scare girl I can throw in there. I'm not really seeing the I'm not getting a lot of value from the from the scared girls. Because I mean I guess the, the idea is that it gives you more cards to play during the second round, but they're also not great cards anyway, so I don't know what I mean like that. And um should I stop here? I don't know where I don't know where the save points are. I'm gonna I'm gonna risk it and end this uh, first video here. And um, if I need to go through it again to make up grunt, then I win. That is required. All right, thanks for joining me for this part one. I guess next time we're going to visit the queen and get permission to leave by force if necessary. Ride the wind to the top of Elbridge to speak with the queen. I'm also going to visit the potion shop and the blacksmith to see what those are about. Um, and uh, yeah, it should be, should be fun. All right, see you next time.